Well, as I said, I think that the feedback that I'm getting from the, the feedback that I'm getting from Ray would indicate that he is consistently getting the signal without the box. So there we have the box. Now the, the box killer. Hit enter. Hmm. Let's see if we are we sure this is on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. Okay, so. All right. There you go. Teamwork. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Adequate to the task. <laughs> All righty, so we're just about ready to get be to begin. So, good morning, Woodland Pond. I'm Deborah, and we're going to spend some time together doing yoga. So, let's keep one thing in mind for our safety, and that is everything I say is a suggestion, it's not a demand. So if I suggest anything that's inappropriate for your body because you've had surgery and injury, arthritis, or you're just tired, skip it. Have a seat, relax, rejoin us when you're ready. All righty. So you can sit on the floor, you can sit in a chair, you can stand up. If you're sitting in a chair, move your butt forward so you're not leaning against the back of the chair. Put your feet on the floor, looking like the number 11, hip width apart. And if you're on the floor, it's lotus, half lotus, cross-legged, or kneeling. Let's roll our pelvis forward so we come up onto our sits bones. Pull your abs in and up. As you lift your breastbone, ask your shoulders to go back and down, and then lift the back of your head. Good. So let's close our eyes for a few seconds and find out how we're doing today. Just check in with your body. How are your joints? How's your digestion? How's your mood? Just notice. Then opening our eyes, we can extend our arms, palms up, inhale up. And then two fountain breaths. Lovely, that's a good start. Let's start by lubricating one of our shoulders, doing the largest forward circle that you're capable of making. And then reverse it. Good morning, shoulder. Time to get that lubricant flushing through that joint. Let that go and say good morning to your other shoulder exactly the same way. Get the stiffness out. Let's go backwards. Good. Release it. Give everything a nice loosening up. Take a deep breath. Ah, very good. And let's see. Let's pick some apples. So reach up really tall, pull an apple down. Reach up on the other side, pull an apple down. And just go back and forth, but reach up as high as you can go in order to get the very best apples at the top of that tree. Good. Give everything a loosening up. Take a breath. Good. Let's bring our arms up and behind our heads. Interlace your fingers somewhere behind your head, and now push your elbows backward, hold it, and breathe. Good. Release it. Let everything relax a little bit. 
And then once again, lift your breastbone and push your elbows backwards. Relax everything a little, take a breath. Last time, lift your breastbone, push your elbows backwards. And release it. Give everything a little loosening up, take a breath. Good, all right, so let's do the Swarrow Cactus thing. So one arm comes down, then the other one comes down. Don't forget your goal here is to keep your elbows up at shoulder level. If you're feeling feisty this morning and you wanna do both hands in motion simultaneously, you can certainly do that. You don't have to, it's up to you. Just keep an eye on those elbows. Good. When you're done with that, release it, give everything a loosening up. And let's turn and look over our right shoulder. Come back to center, look over your left shoulder. Good. Let's do a few cat and cow stretches. Heads coming forward, bellies going backwards as we exhale down. As we begin to inhale, we're lifting our breastbone, looking up, exhaling down. Inhaling up. And you simply go back and forth at your own pace, pairing your motion with your breathing. Well, when you've had enough of that, come back to center and let's stir the pot, pretending that your spine is a wooden spoon, the bowl is your pelvis, and we're just stirring things around a bit. Then go backwards. Good. When you had enough of that, come back to center. Let's put our left hand down, stretch up on the right, lean into your left hand, reach to the left and look at the wall and breathe. Good, come back to center. This time, right arm down, left arm stretching for the ceiling. Lean into your right hand, look at the wall and breathe. Good, come back to center, left arm down, right arm stretching up, leaning into your left hand and breathing. Come back to center, right arm down, left arm reaching up and lean to the right. You should feel a nice stretch on the left side of you. Good, come back to center. Give everything a good loosening up, take a breath. Alrighty, so let's see, let's do some nice neck rolls. So sit up nice and straight, lift your breastbone, ask your shoulders, I'm sorry, ask your chin to approach your breastbone without letting your breastbone sink. Breathe into the stretch up and down the back of your neck. And you'll just notice that without any effort on your part, your chin will go a little bit lower. When you're ready, roll your right ear to the right. So your right ear is looking at your right shoulder. You're still looking at the wall. And you can begin to feel the left side of your neck opening. Good. 
Let's nod a slow yes. When you're ready, you can roll your chin to the middle and over to the left. Now your left ear is looking at your left shoulder. You're still looking at the wall and you're breathing. Check in with your breastbone, make sure that it has not sunk. And when you're ready, a slow nod. And back to the middle and over to the right. Back to the middle and over to the left. It's a very gentle, slow motion movement. Until we're done and you come back to center, lift your chin. Good, take a nice deep breath. All right, so let's finish off our next sequence with our nose. Using it as a pointer, draw a little figure eight on its side using your nose. Go backwards. When you've had enough for that, come back to center, take a deep breath. All righty, so we're going to do the seated spinal twist. So if you're sitting on the floor, you'll want to stretch your legs out. If you're sitting in a chair, don't do anything with your lower body because it's fine where it is. On the floor, folks, right leg over left, left arm to right knee. Everybody sit up straight and tall, pivot to your right. Use your hands on your floor or the chair. Help yourself keep a nice vertical spine, a lifted breastbone, abs that are supporting your viscera and lower back, and breathing. Of course, if you're on the floor and you want to sneak a peek at your left toes to make sure they're still pointed at the ceiling, that's fine. So let's twist back a little bit deeper and release it. Come back to center, give everything a loosening up, take a breath. Okay, so the floor folks, it's now left leg over right, right arm to left knee. Everybody is going to twist to the left and breathe. Check in with your abs, make sure they're firm. Check in with your breastbone, make sure it's still lifted. And let's twist back a little deeper and release it. Come back to center, loosen up everything, take a breath. We're about to do the frog. All righty. So of course you can do the frog sitting on the floor, sitting in a chair, standing up. <sighs> Good. All right. So if you're on the chair, Move your butt forward so that you can really separate your knees wide apart. If you're doing it on your sticky mat, make sure both feet are on the mat. Now, keep your hands on your knees. As you lean forward, keep your head and chest up. That'll give you a nice flat back. It'll also require that the stretch come entirely out of your hip joint, which is our whole point. Breathe into the stretch.
let your hips know that it's okay to stretch. It's actually quite beneficial to stretch, even though it's not accustomed to it. Of course, if you've had hip replacement surgery, your doctor may forbid you to do this. That's between you and your doctor. If that's the case, don't do this. Now, when you're ready to come out of it, simply reverse by bringing your head and chest up first as you return to vertical. Good. All righty, let's stand up. <clears throat> so we're going to put ourselves into Tadasana, as we like to do. <clears throat> so make sure that your feet look like the number 11, hip width apart. Feel the floor, and let's sway a little left and right. It'll help us feel the bottom of our feet. Notice the way the bones press into the flesh between the bone and the floor. Come back to center, and now evenly distribute your weight across the bottom of your foot and pull yourself up through your legs. If you want, you can tuck your pelvis a tiny amount, then pull your abs in and up as you lift your breastbone. Ask your shoulders to go back and down. Lift the top of your head. And there we are, Tadasana. Take a deep breath. Fill those lungs. It's a good thing to put one hand on your lower abdomen and another one on your upper abdomen. Now, take an inhalation and notice which hand moves more. See if you can make your lower hand move more by breathing in and pushing out through your lower hand. And then when you release that breath, you pull the lower hand in. Good. All right. So let's bring our arms out. Interlace your fingers. Notice which one's on top. Reverse. Stretch. Bring your hands behind your back. Interlace and lift into chest expansion. Good. Release that, bring your hands out again. This time when you interlace, make sure the other finger is on top. Reverse and stretch. Bring your hands back here again and lift. Breathe into the stretch. Good, release all of that. All right, so today's strength move is going to be Warrior two. So I should actually put my chair here, but I'm not going to. And today you can either do warrior two, or if you want, we can go ahead and do the triangle pose. So separate your feet comfortably wide apart and then rotate your left toes to the left 90 degrees, bend your left knee over your left ankle. Now we want to put our hands on our hips so we see where they're facing. Mine are facing over here. I wanna bring them back to the original orientation. And now I can send my hands and arms left and right out of my shoulders. I turn to look out over my left arm. This is warrior two. If you would like to do the triangle pose, bring your left arm down as you raise your right arm to the ceiling. So one arm is pointed at the floor, the other at the ceiling. If you wish, you can rest your left arm against your left leg, but you're looking at the wall, not the floor, and you're breathing. When you're ready to come out of it, you simply return to vertical. When you're vertical, bring your arms down, step onto your left foot, 
Shake out your legs. Take a breath. Good. All right. So we're going to do it again on the other side. No surprises there. So we're going to separating our feet once again. Rotate your right toes to the right, 90 degrees. Put your hands on your hips and then bring your hips back to the original orientation. Bring your arms left and right out of your shoulders. Turn to look to your right and breathe. If you want to go on to do the triangle pose, bring your right arm down as your left arm rises to the ceiling. And breathe. When you feel like you're ready to come out of it, simply resume vertical. All of these are slow motions. Bring your arms down, step onto your right leg. Shake out your legs, take a breath. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's do Bernice's favorite move. I'm putting my left hand on my chair, which is on my left because I'm gonna step forward with my left foot. Now, if you don't need the chair, you can simply park your left hand on your hip. Step forward, your left knee is bent, your right knee is straight, your hips are facing forward, bring your right arm up, look at the ceiling, bring your right arm down, straightening your left knee, bending your right knee and bowing, and then slowly reverse the whole megillah. And you simply go back and forth at whatever pace makes you happy. If you like doing it very slowly, do it very slowly. If you like doing it faster, do it faster. When you come to your stopping point, get yourself vertical, step forward onto your left leg and do the little loosening routine. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so now I've turned around so that my chair is on my right because I'm gonna drop my right hand on it. I'm stepping forward with my right leg. My left leg is straight. My right knee is bent over my right ankle. I'm reaching up to the sky with my left arm. As I'm bringing it down, my right knee straightens, my left knee bends. And then I go backwards. And we proceed exactly the same way we did on the other side. This is such an asymmetrical posture that incorporates motion. So it's excellent for stimulating the corpus callosum because the two sides of the brain have to work together very carefully to organize this asymmetrical motion. And when you've had enough of this, you just bring your arm down and step forward, shake out your legs. Take a breath. All righty then, let's see, let's do our uh, inversion. So we're gonna put our feet right back into Tadasana and we're gonna hang upside down. But to get there, we don't wanna get there like a wilting flower. We want to go down with a swan dive. So here we go. Inhale up. Exhale down with a flat back. 
stretch forward and then relax your back and just hang upside down. Whether or not you get around to touching the floor is completely irrelevant. What's useful is getting your head below your heart. Breathe encouragement into all those stretching muscles. Let them know that this is okay. Make sure that you check in with your neck. If the top of your head is not pointed at the floor, ask your neck to relax. Twist to the right, take hold of whatever part of your body is over there and keep breathing. Then come back to center and twist to the left. Take hold of whatever's over there. Then you can come back to center, put your hands on your thighs, come up to a flat back and stand up. Give everything a loosening up, take a breath. Ah, very good, very good. Okay, so let's do a little balance work. Let's do the tree. So we wanna bring our chair back. You can either make sure that all four feet are on your sticky mat, or you can park two legs against the wall. You certainly don't want it to slide away from you. I've got it on my left because I'm going to stand on my left leg. And I start with a drishti. You want to pick some little spot out there, either at the horizon or 45 degrees out, that will not move. Fix your gaze upon it. Turn your right leg out 90 degrees and decide where you're going to park your foot. You can leave your toe on the floor, against your ankle, calf, knee, right up into your groin, wherever you want to put it. Get your balance. When you have gotten your balance, decide where you'd like to park your arms. You can leave them on your hips, here, 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 or here. When you're ready to come out of it, simply put your foot down, arms down, shake out your standing leg, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay. So we're going to do the other side. What a surprise. All right. Once again, locate your drishti, turn your left leg out 90 degrees, and decide where you'd like to park it. Find your balance and then find your arm position. When you've had enough, bring your arms down, foot down, shake out your leg. It's hard to do that and talk at the same time. It just does not work very well, does it? <sighs> okay. All righty. So um, let's do the chair. So I'm going to bring my chair back. It's only safety equipment, though. I'm not going to touch it. So I'm going to stand immediately in front of my chair, and I'm putting my feet right back into Tadasana. We're going to bend our knees. Some people habitually bring their knees together when they bend them. That puts an added strain on both your hips and your knees. We do not want strain, so keep them lined up over your feet. All right. Now, 
Put your hands on your hips and bend your knees. Stick your butt out so you have a nice flat back. This is called the chair. You can go as low or as shallow as you want. It's up to you. Breathe into the work. And then simply straighten your legs to stand up. Give everything a wiggle. Shake out your legs. Take a breath. We're going to do it again. Unless, of course, you want to take a breather. It's okay to do that. Now, if you want a little extra challenge, you can just bring your arms up overhead and sink. Stay as long as you like. When you're ready, just stand up. Give everything a little wiggle. Take a breath. Ah, oh, that feels good. Okay. Hmm, let's see. Let's cock one knee, cock the other knee. So we have a little hip switch going. You're shifting your weight from one hip to the other. Bring one arm up and do the grand central wave. Let the other hand do, do the job. Keep that hip switch going. Let both arms do the job together. Good. Release that. Let your legs know that that's over. Take a deep breath. Ah, good. All righty. So that's the first half of the class. We're about to get down on the floor. And I know that there are large numbers of you who are not going to join us on the floor. So I wish you a most excellent week. Remember, we have um, class coming up on video on Wednesday and live again in the pack on Friday. See you then. Namaste. <clears throat> so floor yogis, let's get down into tabletop as we so often do. And we'll just get flexible with a few cat and cow stretches. Belly up, head down. Belly down, head up. Then come back to neutral and pick up your right bent knee to the right to hip height and put it down. Pick up your left bent knee to the left hip height and then back down. Back to the right. Keep your elbows straight and the left. Good. That's enough of that. All right. Let's do the lunge. My, my little bricks here. So we're going to bring our left foot forward. And then I'm sliding my right knee backward because I want to get a little bit of a groin stretch going. Good. Now, for those of you who would like to experience the high lunge, we're in the low lunge position. What you do is you take your right toes, curl them under, and push backward through your right heel and that will push you right into the high lunge. Now, there's no reason for us to stay here because this demands a great deal of balance. So I'm putting my right knee back down on the floor and uncurling my toes. Now, I'm ready to find my balance and bring my left elbow up to my left knee and then bring both hands up and making my torso as vertical as I can make it. Now, if you can, you can change your arm position and look up. 
you can bend your left knee a little bit more to intensify your groin stretch if you wish. When you're ready, bring your hands down and then down to the floor and slowly begin to move your pelvis backwards. Your left knee is straightening. Your left toes are coming off the mat and you're now bowing over your left knee and you're breathing. You'll feel a terrific hamstring stretch, which you can regulate lifting and lowering your chest. When you're ready to come out of it, you begin to bend your left knee and move your pelvis forwards till we get back to our starting position. Now, pick up your left hand, put it on the right side of your left foot. Bring your left foot behind you. Bring your right foot forward. And once again, I'm sliding my left knee backward a little bit so I can get a nice groin stretch going without overdoing it. And once again, if you would like to experience the high lunge, curl your left toes under, push backward through your left heel. Your knee comes right up off the floor. This is the high lunge. I don't think this is a great idea for our age group, so let's put our knee back down and uncurl our toes. Then bring your right elbow up to your right knee. Make yourself as vertical as you can do it. If you want more groin stretch, just bend your right knee a little bit and change your arm position to wherever you wish. When you're ready to come out of it, bring your arms down and then down again, and then slowly begin to move your pelvis backward. Your right knee is straightening. Your right toes lift off the mat as you bow over your right knee. <clears throat> Breathe into that hamstring stretch. And then slowly begin to move your pelvis forwards. Your knee bends, your toes come down to the mat. And when we're back in starting position, take your right hand, move it to the left side of your right foot, bring your knee behind you. And let's sit back on your heels, stretch forward with your arms as far as you can reach. Spread your hands out broadly <clears throat> as you begin to lift your butt. Curl your toes under, lift your butt into the heavens, into downward facing dog, and then push your shoulders back towards your knees. Make sure that you see your feet, not your hands, and breathe. Your elbows are straight. Your knees are straight. If you want to do that walking thing where you flex one knee and then the other, be my guest. Stay as long as you like. When you're done, touch your knees down, big toes together, knees a slightly apart. It's not more than six inches. And then put your forehead on the mat in child pose. Unless, of course, you have knee and sinus issues, in which case you're much better off rolling over onto your back and pulling your knees up onto your chest. 
When you get into your resting posture, take a couple of nice deep breaths and let all of that work and effort go. Alrighty then, let's sit on the floor with our legs stretched out in front of us. We're gonna do some back stretching. So what we wanna do is keep your head and chest up and simply lean forward a little bit. We would like the stretch right now to come out of our hip joints. So we're not asking for anything much. We're just leaning forward a little bit. I also like to bounce, but it's not required. If you don't like bouncing, don't bounce. We're just warming up the region. So now, I think we're about ready. We can put our head down and we can reach forward. If you can reach your feet, go ahead and do that. If not, you can latch on to your legs. <clears throat> and you can very gently pull. Breathe into the things that are stretching. Feel those muscles and tendons. So now let's move the stretch further up. Interlace your hands behind your head. Drop your elbows, drop your head. Keep breathing. When you've had enough and you're ready to sit up, release your hands to the mat and slowly sit up. <coughs> Give everything a little loosening up. Flex your knees so they get a chance to get loose. Take a breath. <sighs> that really compresses the lungs so it feels good to take a deep breath. All righty. So... <clears throat> Now we're gonna open our feet wide apart, comfortably wide apart, don't overdo a good thing. Take the same hand next to the same leg. Don't cross your body. So it's right hand, right leg. Turn your right palm up, sneak a finger or two underneath your right leg. Now we're gonna take our right, I'm sorry, our left shoulder back to the ceiling, bring your left arm up over your head and reach toward your right foot. Nowhere is it written that you have to touch that foot. You're just heading in that direction and that's fine. Feel the big stretch happening and breathe into it. Look at the wall, not the floor. When you're ready to come out of it, simply take your arm back to the ceiling and behind you, lean back, cock your knees, take a breath. Because we're gonna do it again. 
Okay, once again, it's same arm, same leg. It's your left arm, left leg, do not cross your body. Palm up, sneak a finger or two underneath your leg, take your right shoulder back to the ceiling, bring your right arm up over and reach towards your left toes and breathe. Once again, you're looking at the wall. When you've had enough stretch, send your right arm back to the ceiling. Cock your knees, take a deep breath. <sighs> well, since we did that nice back sequence, I think we should finish up with the fish. So we all need a blanket. All righty. Now, let me show you uh, the the blanket rolling technique. If you have one of these very heavy cotton blankets, it's too much. So the trick to doing the roll up here is to allow part of the blanket to be unrolled. The, the little polyester blankets, not a problem. You can use the whole blanket and you're good. But for these big cotton blankets, we don't really want your blanket to be any more than three inches tall. So feel free to leave a portion of it unrolled. Now we want the blanket roll to hit our back, maybe two inches below our armpits. So eye it as best you can, and then slowly lay down. Easy does it. There we are and slowly lower your head to the floor and allow your arms to drape on the floor. As long as nothing hurts, you should be good. Now the trick is that this is such an unusual position for us that it's very hard for us to relax. Close your eyes. Take a couple of deep breaths. And see if you can persuade your body that nothing untoward is happening simply because we're in this very strange position. When you're ready to come out of it, there is a technique. We're going to roll to one side. So I'm going to roll to my right side. 
the easiest way to accomplish that is to bend my left leg, put my left foot flat on the floor and use the power of my leg to push, which rolls me onto my right side. And I come up onto my elbow and then I can sit up and I can cast my blanket aside. Good, all righty. Everybody survived that okay? Good. All right. So let's lay down, bring your knees up onto your chest, give them a hug. You can clasp your hands either in front of or behind your shins. If you've had surgery or if you have arthritis in your knees, this position might be a little bit more comfortable. It'll give your knees more room. So let's bring your hands down to the floor and keeping your knees together, draw a circle on the ceiling. Go backwards. All righty, so put your left foot on the floor, bring your hands up and interlace your hands either in front of or behind your right knee, slide your left leg out straight. On the exhale, pull your knee close to your chest and on the inhale, let it rebound and go back and forth in the wind relieving posture. Bring your other knee up, transfer your hands to your left knee, put your right foot on the floor, slide that leg out straight and continue. Good, let's roll over onto our right side. Extend your right arm above your head so you can rest your head on your upper arm, bend your knees, put your left hand flat on the floor. And you can use your top leg to ride your giant imaginary bicycle. Go backwards. Kick forward once, back twice. Forward once, back twice. Good. Now bring your top knee up close enough to your face so you can reach down with your left hand to get a good grip on your foot. Now push your left knee down to the bottom of your mat and feel your quadriceps stretch. If you have stretch to spare, push your hand and foot behind you into the half bow position. Breathe into the stretch and release your foot. Straighten out both legs together, keep your feet together, lift both feet off the ground Make sure your abs are participating in this effort and just hold your feet 
a couple of inches off the floor. This does not have to be a big motion. Then put both feet on the floor and roll over onto your left side. Stretch your left arm above your head so you can rest your head on your upper arm and ride your giant imaginary bicycle. Go backwards. And then kick forward once, back twice, forward once, back twice. Good. Now bring your right knee up close enough to your face so that you can get a good grip on your right foot. Push your right knee down to the bottom of your mat. And if you have stretch available, push your right hand and right foot behind you into the half bow. Then release your foot, stretch out both legs nice and straight, keeping your feet together. Simply lift your feet two or three inches off the floor. Make sure your abs are participating and breathe. and put everything down because now it's time for deep relaxation. So if you have socks, pillows, cushions, blankets, anything you might need to stay warm and comfortable, now is the time to put them on so that you can arrange yourself on the floor in the world's most comfortable position it might be the corpse pose. It might be some other pose. It's up to you. You are the only judge of this. When you reach your resting place, close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. So now it's time to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, make any loosening motions which might feel good. 
before we roll to one side to come up to a seated position. And when we get there, we'll put our hands in prayer position, close our eyes, lower our heads, and give thanks for this day. And lifting our heads and opening our eyes, we can look at one another and say, Namaste, Namaste, Namaste. I hope you have a wonderful week. It's going to warm up a little bit. See you later. <laughs>